Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, since we've gotten our fascia mounts installed on the side of the deck, we went ahead and got all of our posts mounted to the fascia mounts. And there's just one set screw on each side that holds the post to the fascia mount. And then we were able to complete the installation of our railing. We got our top and bottom rails in. We cut in our uh, glass support pieces, which sit inside the rail. It's a vinyl piece that goes on the top and the bottom. We installed the light kit and the top as well as a little gift to our homeowner. And then we came back, we slipped in our glass and we kind of got our ends all put together proper as far as distance and gap, so it looks nice. And then we came back and put in these middle support stanchions, which again, just one screw here and two fasteners here. We had to fur them out as well from our fascia that tucked under, all because it's a waterproof deck system and that dry joist EZ that we did had to had to cantilever out past the end of the deck for a certain distance so that it doesn't the water doesn't have a capillary action and try to creep back underneath this and get the inside of our garage wet. So all that's done. Uh, it turned out really nice. It's a good look. It's pretty sturdy. So the, the center piece right here just kind of holds up the bottom rail for the future for support so that this doesn't sag. So that worked out very well. We still have to do a little bit of touch up and grain paint, that kind of thing. Nothing major there. And then once we got our railing completed to code, we had to install a graspable rail on this four set. There's four rises right here. So to code, you have to have a grabbable handrail 34 to 38 inches above the tread nosing. So we put this right at 36. So we anchored it right to the cement wall. And then we just came up with a little bracket that we made up to mount up against the fence. So it's just something that's nice and sturdy and stable so that when you're using this larger set of stairs, we weren't required to put one up here. We weren't required to have one on the flat landing. We just were required to have one right here for this set of stairs. So we went ahead and did it. To get our final inspection, we have to have this installed. Now, since that's finished, I don't know if you guys saw the lights that we did. So these are our Inlight Fusion 22 with a black trim ring. Those look really nice. We don't have them activated at the moment or I'd turn them on for you. We put one in each rise coming up and then a couple shooting this way as well uh, off this flared set of stairs, off of this uh, staircase on the upper section of the deck. And what we're doing right now is we are finishing up a trim piece that we put on the wall. So this was a little bit tricky. So that's AZEC that's mounted to concrete and we cortex that to the wall. So what we did to be able to mount the AZEC to the concrete was we took a small concrete bit, smaller than what we needed to install these wall anchors. And these are like standard drywall anchors, but they're plastic, so they're not gonna rot and they're not gonna decay. So they kind of work good for what we needed to do, right? We put the board up against the concrete. We drilled through the AZEC into the concrete. We pulled the AZEC off the wall. We drilled the proper size diameter hole, which is a quarter inch to fit this. We dropped these into the concrete wall. Then we went back and we, we put some uh, construction adhesive slash sealant on the backside of the piece of AZEC. We stuck that to the wall. Then we took a Cortex screw. This is a two and a half inch top lock stainless steel screw. We screwed that th through the same hole that we pre-drilled through the hole earlier with the smaller bit. It was small enough to where our Cortex action would still work. I believe it's a 3 16 we started with, because I couldn't find an eighth inch concrete bit at the home center, so I think it's a 3 16 So then we had a 3 16 pilot hole through our AZEC. Let's imagine this hand is a concrete wall. Here's our concrete anchor. We already had a hole through our piece of AZEC, which is right here. So then we were able to put the screw into the AZEC, start going, and then eventually it went in, but it had to go in a little bit further to capture and, and the Cortex screw to go beyond subsurface so we could put a cork in it. Now I have a small video that I filmed of us doing this whole procedure. So I'm sure Studio Man will work some magic. So now that we have our ASEC attached to the wall and it's glued and screwed, and I screwed it every two feet. I thought every foot was gonna be a little overkill and I was right, a two foot was plenty and it's doing a really great job. And now Thomas is taping the top of our AZEC that's against the wall because we have a little bit of uh, construction sealant that has kind of squeezed out of the top. So now we're putting this tape up and we're going to 
put a clean black bead of through the roof on top of that to kind of cover up all that white and just to give us a nice seal so the water can't even get through between the concrete and the azek it'll just kind of sit on top and then nestle down now as a visual so we have a piece of flashing behind this so this this piece right here is grooved out i i've dadoed out from an inch down down it's it's dadoed out a quarter inch so the top of this board is tight up against the concrete but the bottom of this board has a gap so i filled that full of sealant so that when we screwed this to the wall it squeezed up against the flashing because the flashing stuck out from the wall a little bit in certain spots now it's all glued together and so the top and the bottom are sealed so now this board won't move and it's it's screwed to the wall and it's glued to the wall and it's glued to the flashing as well but that flashing actually goes behind this piece under the decking over eight inches and then it drains into one of these pans of this dry joist easy product that we installed the first joist bay gets no water at all it's completely sealed and covered any water that hits this drains away and down and then it, it exits the deck this way this far over that's a brief explanation of the trim so we're just getting that all buttoned up once that's done then we're going to run back downstairs and start on our facade for the front of the garage which we have to mount some materials to the concrete and then we need to build down a stub wall level so the garage guy has something nice and square and level to uh, build his door to. So that's what's on the docket for today. We had our local building official show up for our final inspection and guess what? We passed. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's right here, see? There's the signature, there's the date, building final. I didn't write that in there. That was his writing, okay? So that's all buttoned up. So now it's really a race to the finish. We just, we got all the legal stuff and everything required by law or by code, by code uh, done. And so as far as the building officials concerned, this job is complete. <clears throat> now it's just a cosmetic thing that we gotta do A very vital part of every job. We have to have a honey bucket or a porta potty, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I always give these guys a thumbs up because, you know, it's not the greatest job in the world and we do appreciate a clean bathroom. So thank you, honey bucket. Now it's just really a race to the finish line, getting some of these little finish things done and then buttoning up this front facade and waiting for the garage door guy. If we're lucky, he'll be back as we build the next door neighbor's deck he'll be back here to install the door so I can give you guys that finished look with it all done and complete. And that's always a good feeling, right? Always a good feeling. We're gonna finish up this, we have to do over here as far as our trim caulking, of buttoning that up. And then we're gonna get started on this uh, front fascia skirting facade parapet detail on the front of this garage. I'm probably not saying that right, but I'm sure somebody out there knows the correct verbiage that I'm looking for. So go ahead and make a comment about it. I'll reply when I get a chance. Okay. Oh crap, an inch and a half ain't even gonna fit in here. Oh man, that kind of sucks because it's only an inch. You can't take out that much. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna take it to here. Maybe we can fake something in here. Can I get that measurement again, please? Yeah, and then I'm just gonna worry about these little side side pieces later. I'm just, it's kind of what's hanging me up. You know those bolts, the, the Titan bolts? Mm -hmm. The ones we use to lock everything down with? We have some left. Right. I need those and a roto hammer yeah. and the right size bit. I think it's a half inch. So I'm gonna put an inch shim underneath this two by six treated that sits on the ground. So if it gets wet, it doesn't wick up into the board.
that's good. Now let's smack the bottom over a little. Hit it way low, because I think it's, yeah. Okay, it's sticking. Do we have the compressor hooked up yet? I really shouldn't do this without cleaning this out first. It's on there. That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know how people say that all the time. That ain't going nowhere. Well, I don't think it is. I think we're good. So now it's just building into these. Now I can put some marks on this thing. I, I kind of erased my laser line, but I think I've marked it on the sidewall here. So good, good on me for doing that. This is a reference point line. So this is, this is level right here. So I don't know if these walls are plumb. It doesn't really matter. We're just gonna roll with it. It's going to be when I'm done with it. Yes. Well, one side, one side's going to be seven feet. One side's going to be a little bit less because the floor is an inch out of level. It's higher over here. So we have to go off some kind of a reference point. So I'm going to go off my marks I made earlier with our Stabila because I believe in those. So here's our reference line right here. Okay. So anything measurements that we take, as long as I reference these two points, we'll be able to make the opening level so that when the garage door comes in, that's going to be the most important thing that our header, our header is level. So uh, that's what we're going to start doing right now is figuring out a few things, getting some measurements and start cutting down some timber and then get a string line in here so that we can, because our deck's out of level this way, we got to get a string line in here so that we can measure down to the string line so we know what length to make our studs. They're just going to be little eight to 12 inch pieces of material, but they're still like studs, like in a wall that we can use to attach some nylo sheet to, which is a, um, another product we're going to use that is no longer made, but it's like a waterproof plywood. Okay. Let me get this other side <laughs> laser out again, but this is all getting covered. So it doesn't matter if I mark it up. It should be about an inch difference though, from the bottom, that's 47 and a half. And I think this one over here should be 46, close to 46 and a half. But this ground again, is so goofy, 46 and a quart, well, 46 and an eight. So that's where you go, okay, well, which side of seven feet do I go to? And you can see that this piece of the concrete right here is probably the highest thing in this whole line is right here. So it kind of sucks to have to go off of that. But so what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure up seven feet from this wall and that's where our finish is. Okay, I'd bring me a ladder. Okay, and then we have to subtract an inch for fascia. Okay, so then our wall plate will be an inch and a half. So that'll be right there. What I was thinking is we do a top plate, we mount all of our studs to it and then we attach it, we install it and then put the bottom plate on. So then we can like put all of our fasteners, our structural legs and everything into this and it's money. Okay, that'll go up. Is it too snug? Okay. Is it that tight? Oh, that might be, might be a little too tight. So you gotta be a half inch inside of the... I 
I need to get some new ladders, man. We're gonna have to do a little notchy notch around these beams too. Okay, Thomas, bring it down. That is what we need. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, Thomas, I'm gonna give you a list of what to cut. Seven and a half plus, seven and a half, seven and a quarter. Seven eighth plus, seven plus, seven minus, six and three quarters, six and five eighths, six and a half minus, six and a quarter, six plus, five and seven eighths, five and five eighths plus. Okay, come on down. Okay, give me a sec. I did. Okay, now I need the clamp. Okay. Bentley, are you in the middle? Yes, sir. Good. Oh, geez, I didn't realize you're that tight. Uh, uh. Oof. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. We uh, got our frame up for our garage door header, and it's very solidly attached. It's seven feet. Don't expect much more than that from me, thank you. Okay, so uh, what we have to do next is we're gonna take some of the stuff called Nilo Sheet. It's basically half inch fiberglass plywood, but it's a resin and, and carpet fiber core, which they don't make anymore, unfortunately. And I have a bunch of uh, B grade stuff that's perfect for what we're doing here. So we're going to attach a piece of that to face this off. So we have a solid face to attach our skirting to and our trim work to. And then we're also gonna G-tape that and bladder it, just like we bladdered the sides of this thing so no water can get through our fascia details. And then this will be a wrap. Anyways, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like this episode, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you wanna be notified when we're putting out new content. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.